Trying to use the internet as a way to either replace, which would be a terrifying thing for most media companies, or at least enhance our television experience. Right now there's about three competing alternatives. One, you could deliver files to your PC like iTunes does, where you pay for those, you get to own them, you keep them, and you can watch them on your PC, and if you're the few people smart enough, you can connect it to your TV. Well, B, there's a world in which you could subscribe to video or watch video for free that is ad-supported, and on their computer, or your TV eventually when you make that connection you have this unlimited access to all these things but you don't own them you get to watch them for a while and when you're done with them off they go the third solution isn't ex it doesn't even exist yet which is a world in which you today have a cable box possibly sitting on top of your television well imagine that there's an Ethernet port in the back of that set-top box and that that box now suddenly becomes internet smart and it can look for YouTube videos it can go out on the internet and get any video that you want on abc.com or on ComedyCentral.com, suddenly that's the future of television delivered by the internet because it's in the place you want to watch it, at the time you want to watch it, and it's the show that you most care about rather than what's usually on at any given time you turn the TV on. So how is this whole evolution from uh, internet video to the television set, how is it going to happen? Who's going to make it happen? Who are the winners going to be in your opinion? You know, the early moves have been made by Apple with the iTunes store. We're throwing out paid downloads and saying, okay, you can own these episodes. That's a short-term, temporary solution. A few million people do it because they're either really into Apple or they're really into media or both. That's only a short-term solution, though, because advertising is the way that most video is consumed today. It's the most cost-effective way to produce hours and hours and hours of video, and that's why it's succeeding today. So we're going to see it happen even more, where video is going to be supported by advertisements. Now, today that means you go to NBC.com and you watch Heroes Online with a few ads that interrupt the experience. Well, tomorrow they'll actually allow you to download that file to your PC with the advertisement built in so that you can watch it on a plane or on a train or at any time with a bunch of friends and carry that video around with you but still have the ads with it. It's really ad-supported video that's going to go the distance. And if you look at abc.com, they're doing broadcast quality on their website because they've acknowledged this. It's ad-supported video delivery. We're not going to make you pay for it. Music is a very good industry to look at for similarities and for differences. The thing about music is yes, we've had a culture of collection, but there's a reason we have a culture of collection. It's because music is a medium that we want to hear over and over and over. And except for your four-year-old who wants to watch that Nickelodeon show over and over, most adults don't want to watch the same show over and over and over. So the shelf life of video content is dramatically different than the shelf life of audio content. That means that we have to refresh the video content to keep you interested. That's what network television is all all about. You don't come back and watch the same episode of Grey's Anatomy week after week. You watch the next one and that's what video is so good at. So how do we do that? Well in downloads on music you can spend a dollar to get that music because you're going to hold it and you're going to keep it. In video you're not going to want that. Instead the advertiser is going to subsidize that for you. So audio is a great thing to look at because we can see well one of the big risks we see from audio is the risk of piracy. So we're trying to make sure we avoid piracy in video the way we experienced it in audio. But in terms of the consumption dynamics, television is a very different thing. Video is a very different thing and so the goal of television is to keep it refreshed, keep it new, and how do you fund those new productions? You have advertisers pay for it. In your report you talk about the limited success of Apple TV. Could you talk about that a little bit? Well let me just say that Apple TV in its first version is not the solution. It will sell a million units because there are enough Apple fanatics who love the media, who have that special combination and also have a little bit of extra cash, who will spend $300 for the Apple TV. So great. A million of those will be sold. But stop for a minute and realize that you already have a consumer electronics device sitting in your living room, possibly your den as well, that is bringing you television. It's called your cable set-top box. And if I'm Motorola or I'm Cisco, I'm looking at that box very carefully and I'm saying, I don't want Apple to do that. I don't want Sony to build that into their next television, which Sony is starting to do. Instead, I'm going to make sure that I go to my cable partners and say, look, this is the future. at and is already doing it with their U-verse television solution. You're now starting to see the Dish Network from EchoStar. They're saying the same thing. We're going to make our set-top boxes satellite compliant and internet capable. So why don't you do it, cable companies? And if Comcast turns that switch on and says, let's roll out those internet-enabled set-top boxes that bridge the PC to the TV, boom. There's really no market left to be had because it's Comcast's decision. Comcast puts that box in your home. You don't put that box in your home. And that's what, that's what Motorola and Cisco are betting on. And it's their 
they're likely the most the ones in the best position to succeed.